One of the problems you might have noticed with Flux is these annoying lines. There are various GitHub issues which highlight the problem too. Here we can see the stripies quite clearly. It's been driving me squirrel nuts too trying to get rid of these, but I think I might finally have found a way to at least very much reduce them. And yes, even with a bit of upscaling for those extra details. All these images are over 2K wide, so if you're interested in seeing what seems to work for me, then follow along as I guide you through. Comfy UI is what I'm using here, and if you don't have it installed yet, then don't worry, because it's super easy and nicely documented for a whole range of hardware. If you think you can't possibly run any commands on your computer because of reasons, they even have a self-contained portable download. I've already done more detailed guides on installation, which you can find linked in the video description if you need. Comfy UI supports Flux out of the box, meaning all you need to do is download the Flux models, with the Comfy UI examples page nicely detailing what to download and to where. There are many custom nodes available for Comfy, and when it comes to installing them, Comfy UI Manager is your friend. This is a must install add on in my book as it lets you automatically install missing nodes, search, and also update. So, with Comfy, Flux, and the Manager in tow, it must now be time for the workflow. Oh, free poetry. Talking of free things, you can grab this workflow for free via my Patreon, with paying customers getting the enhanced edition along with any of the updates I make to it, and the warm glow of helping to support the channel. A massive thank you to you all. Right, load the workflow up using the load button, or if you've got the new interface like I'm using here, up in the top left, you can browse to it there. The first group is all the basic stuff with a model switch for the standard or low VRAM GGUF models. You can delete the switch and model loader you don't use if you like. As you may be aware, the GGUF models are smaller, but obviously a lot slower. And you can see from the file sizes there which one fits best into your RAM. And do also note that in the note, the links are available for all the various different models and custom nodes used here. Back to basics, and to say VRAM clip can go to the CPU, and for speed, the much smaller VAE can stay in VRAM. I've got an alternative version in there from zero int, this VIT L14 text, but that is a purely optional change. To save noodles, I've got these use anywhere nodes, but on the other hand, if you like noodles, you can just right click and then select show UE links and you get all the noodles going everywhere. You can also convert them to real links as well if you like. You get a big stack of LoRa's too, and I'm using the 8-step HyperLoRa for Flux, along with a couple from Shaka Labs for anti-blur and detail. Group number two is where the magic happens because that's your prompt and the initial image size here. I've got that set to 1600 by 1200 to start with. Group 3 is a fairly typical Split Sigma custom sampler setup, and for the most part, all you do here is change the seed or scale. When using HyperLoRa, the usual DEIS beta combo doesn't work, but DPM++ 2M is pretty good. Now, I've added some scaled noise nodes up there because I prefer the color control. I'll show you what I mean down here in this comparison. So here's your typical K sampler there without the, the split sigmas or the scaled noise. And it's, it's still a good image. Now this is the main thing you see here. We haven't got the stripes, which is good. Now we're not worrying too much about those skin issues and things like that. We're just looking at the stripes here, but it is a bit over bright, which is why I added the scaled noise. And as you can see, I think side by side, scaling that noise, you can get the color a little bit more realistic. Okay, great job done then. We've got rid of the stripes. Well, not quite, as we also want to do a high res fix, maybe add a few details to the original image, that sort of thing. This is where group number four comes in. Yes, it's kind of cheating, I know, but image to image does work a lot better at low denoise values than doing a latent upscale. The upscale by node there, I can do 1.5, and this will recalculate everything nicely divisible by 16 before passing it on to do a VAE encode. We are still limited by Flux's ability to generate images nicely over 2K. So in this example, the maximum upscale is about 1.5, which does give us a fairly reasonable 2400 by 1800 result. In group five, we're just doing much the same as in group three, only with fewer steps and a lower denoise. You can set that to whatever you fancy, depending on how much you want the image to change. If you need to fix text, for example, it can help to go a little bit higher. 
so that you can see the changes made versus the plain resized image. I've got a little compare node here. So there's the original. Oops, I popped it in. But there we go. We can see it adds all the nice detail to the skin. We'll zoom in even more. So we've got the smooth one. That's the plain one. And then we bring in that detail. Obviously, it's still not perfect skin, but it is a little bit better. You can see especially on the chest there and the details on the cloth. OK, humans are boring, so let's take a look at some other examples. With the same settings and style again, this time I've got a much more interesting prompt where I'm asking for a humanoid rodent wearing tweed who's being grown in a vat. Looking at the comparison for the initial generation, I can't see any stripes in either, though once again I prefer the scaled colours. Moving over to the image compare node there, we can see the standard resize. And then as we bring in that upscale, we get lots of nice detail on the fur and his little tweed jacket and the metal and the water. So I think I prefer the upscale there. Here he is then at almost full resolution and maybe, I don't know, sort of, but I don't think it's certainly as visible as the examples we saw earlier on those GitHub issues. Does it work perfectly all the time? Well, unfortunately not, but generally speaking, little changes to the noise or the denoise can help. Also note that those LoRa's make all the difference when it comes to photograph styles, but when it comes to more cartoony things like this, it helps to make a few changes. The anti-blur and detail LoRa's both give more photographic results, so in this example I'm just using the hyper LoRa. Getting rid of those other two is good because otherwise you'll get a photographic style. The other thing here is the scaled noise, so here I've gone down with lower values being needed for these light colours and less noisy, less detailed images, so around 1.6 for that sort of style. Plain solid colour backgrounds like these can also get speckled if the noise is too high, so that's another reason to bring it down. Having a look at the comparison nodes then, so there we've got the standard render, looks quite good, and here we've got the one with the slightly scaled noise, as you can see it's a little bit lighter, less saturated. Over in the upscale comparison node, so there's the standard image and we still haven't got any lines which is nice and as I scroll across you can see all of the extra details that have been added. But nerdy, what about that new control net upscaler? Does that help? Well, I suppose we should take a look then. But you are of course going to need at least another 3.6 gig of VRAM to spare uh, being a control net. Being a control net, you load it with the typical load control net model, and then you apply it with the, I think you've guessed it already, yes, apply control net. Though they've called it an upscaler, I think it performs a little bit more like a sort of IP adapter, allowing you to reimagine images without using a prompt, which is what they've got here. They've just got a sort of noisy image, which then gets reimagined. For example, if you try something with text, then it's all too obvious. We'll crack this one open. There's the, the full resolution image. Now what I'm doing with this, I'm upscaling it a little bit there to 1024. These are all standard. I'm not even using the Hyper LoRa this time. Down here, Euler, SGM Uniform, 28 steps. Strength there on 0.6. What you get as the result? Is that an upscale? Is that an upscale? I'm not sure. How about this one instead then? It's a small image. If I open that up there, we can see it's 512 by 512. It's got lots of grain and noise. That should be absolutely fine. Upscale to 1024, nothing in the prompt. And then we run that through. Is that, is that an upscale? Now, just to do these quickly, I've got it set down to eight steps with the hyperflux turned on. So if we put the prompt strength all the way down to 0 0.1, then you should be able to see as it works its way through. What, what do you reckon we're going to get with zero prompt and a very low strength? Well, we'll see in just a second. Here it comes. It's a, it's a dog. Interesting, is that an upscale? At 0 0.3, we can see the image has changed again and we've got a woman, but is that an upscale? At 0 0.7, it does start to look a bit more like the original image. Now, that's, is that an upscale? Going up to a strength of one then, is that an upscale? Well, it looks pretty close, doesn't it? Let's, let's go over to the comparison node and see. So there's the original image and there's the upscale. So I guess, I guess it's, it's, it's sort of smoothed the background out. It has fixed her hair and those, that's got more detail in there. So I don't know, is it, is it an upscale? <laughs> anyway, I'll leave the definition of what counts as an upscale up to you. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. 
showing us AI in a really British way. Yeah. 